and one of the people, more than one actually, commented and said, look it, I'm with you. I'm against nuclear weapons. I don't think they should be used. But the main employer is Lockheed Martin in this area. And without this job, I can't survive. Like, this is it for me. So in some cases, too, whether it's in Seattle or Tacoma, whether it's in Syracuse, places like that, we also have to think economically about how we're going to reach somebody when this is just simply a jobs program for them and they're not really um, even in favor of this. So I think economics as a whole, the divestment piece is one piece of a larger issue we have to think about when we talk about economics and nuclear weapons. A uh, question for Ray about the Prohibition Treaty and what comes next. So on the entry into force, the way that international law works is um, once a treaty's been adopted by states, it needs to be ratified by a certain number of countries to enter into force. So this is the same for, for any treaty. Um, it was the same as it was for Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, which still hasn't entered into force um, after all these years because it's never had enough countries uh, join it. So for the nuclear ban, uh, the number is quite high. It's 50 that have to ratify it nationally. Um, right now we have 19 countries that have ratified. Uh, we have 69 countries that have signed it, which indicates an intention to ratify and uh, consist that they'll behave consistently with the treaty. Uh, it'll probably be, I would say, earliest end of 2019, um, more likely early 2020, before the treaty is entered into force. Uh, the pace of ratifications for this treaty is pretty normal right now. It takes a while for it to go through national legislation. Um, what's interesting is, so far, up until October, the treaty had such a good pace of ratification that it was the fastest of any WMD treaty ever. Um, but it's facing also this opposition that I talked about. So it's the only treaty we know of that actively has the US, Russia, France, UK campaigning against countries joining it and threatening them with economic and military aid. So uh, we'll see if we can continue the pace. I don't, I'm not concerned about getting 50, we definitely know that, but we'll see how the pace is after that with, with different countries. Um, if you're interested in that work, uh, at the international level, you can always um, get in touch with ICANN because we have people that, that help us out with that, um, calling different delegations and capitals and talking to them about where they are in their process. Um, in terms of state level work, uh, I think it's really significant for a few reasons. Um, firstly, it's a way to create discussions locally and at the state level about nuclear weapons, which is the same that's happened with the resolutions in Baltimore and the resolution that you're trying to get passed here. The same with our city council resolution in, in Toronto um, and in Melbourne and Sydney is it's all opportunities for public discussion. It's opportunities for this to be in the news, um, for you and your groups to get quoted, to be talking about these issues. It also signals an intention to the governments, to the federal governments, that constituents do care about this issue and that, you know, for an economic heavyweight like California to be saying that it doesn't want uh, nuclear weapons, that it doesn't want its state or its cities to be targets, and that it wants the U.S. government to disarm and to join this treaty um, or to go through the um, policies listed in Back from the Brink. Um, I think all of these things are really important to signal to the government that this is a significant, a significant issue. And it also shows the rest of the world that U.S. citizens do give a damn about this and that they are trying to do something, which is really important. Um, and it gives them hope that internally there is pressure coming to bear on the government um, and that this is not a monolith uh, in the world. So, um, so it's a, the countries that are supporting the nuclear ban treaty, um, they're a mix of countries. So um, you have uh, countries like Brazil, Indonesia, economic powerhouses from the global south that are endorsing this. Um, you have some European countries like Ireland, Austria, Liechtenstein, smaller European countries that aren't part of NATO that are endorsing this. Um, you basically have all of Latin America. You have most of Africa um, so far. We'll bring the rest on board once we can get France to back off. Um, and uh, um, Southeast Asia as well. So these are these are all countries of mixed economies and um, huge big countries that are supporting this. It's really just only the nuclear armed states, the nine nuclear armed states that don't support it. And right now the North Atlantic Treaty Organization states are not supporting it. 
Um, but that is changing too, and that's part of the shifting of the narrative and the discourse and the constantly getting this into the media through um, the city pledges. Uh, Madrid is about to join, other European cities will join soon. Um, having parliamentary debates, we're seeing split, splits in parliament over this question. Um, the European Parliament actually supports the abolition of nuclear weapons. So we are seeing changes already that the treaty is having an impact. Uh, so now we have a very, very special treat. Uh, thanks to Ray. <laughs> so I forgot to bring this out during my talk, um, but it's in relation to how we all get called crazy and naive and that we should just stop doing what we're doing. But every once in a while, we do get recognized for our work, and this is a very collective prize. It is the Nobel Peace Prize for ICANN. And we won this last year. Um, and this is, this is really a recognition, I think, for all anti-nuclear activism and for activism in general, for this idea that people can come together and make change and collaborate for, for some good in the world. And recognition at this level is very, very rare. Um, and so I always bring it with me to try and share it with the activists who have spent so much time doing this work and with new activists who want to get involved and can feel inspired by, by what can happen. So if you would like to visit with, we call it Alfred, um, <laughs> Alfred Nobel. If you would like to meet Alfred, uh, just come find me. Um, but don't skip the workshops, because it's yeah, very important. Yeah, hold it down. Yeah. Hold it down. Okay. Hold it down.